everybody. So um, um, no promises, but I'll try to catch us up on time here. So just a quick, uh, okay. Just a quick reminder, ONOS is one of the layers that you saw on uh, in the SDN uh, architecture that you saw on Brian's diagram. It's basically the detached control plane. Um, it serves as a platform for developing the various traffic steering applications, monitoring applications, uh, basically providing the intelligence to your network. It's uh, primarily aimed at service provider networks, uh, but uh, it's by no means limited to that domain. Uh, because it's, it aims to provide uh, support for mission critical networks, it's built around a distributed core. Um, it's also built around uh, strong principles of abstractions and models uh, to provide configuration abstractions, control abstractions that uh, provide application portability without becoming addicted to details of a specific protocol or specific device behavior. And Brian alluded to it earlier by just simply um, providing a separate southbound that encapsulates the protocol specifics. You can introduce support for not only old technologies, but also not yet invented technologies or future technologies. And lastly, it's built as an applications platform because uh, uh, we can't necessarily foresee what kind of creative solutions uh, operators will want to come up with. Um, it's built as a layered uh, so software stack. It's written in Java uh, based on OSGI and Caraf specifically. Um, on top of this, uh, we've layered uh, distributed applications uh, platform functionality, which has really nothing to do with networking, but which just provides ability to build a symmetric cluster from the various, uh, uh, from multiple different instances. And on top of that distributed applications platform, Onos builds a set of networking models and networking abstractions, um, which provide kind of the basic minimum of, um, of, of the SDN controller. And beyond that, everything else is distributed as an ONOS application or, or an extension. And this can include drivers, protocol providers, traffic steering applications, various utilities, applications both big and small. And not only is the volume of the controller extensible, but so is the surface of it, because you, know, you want the controller to be able to be uh, integrated with various uh, um, orchestration platforms, and so it offers uh, REST API, it offers, uh, we're building gRPC, we we'll of course uh, um, have REST conf interface, there's also a command line interface and a user interface. Uh, now the core itself is non-monolithic, it comprises of many, many different modules. Uh, the idea here is not to go through these individually, but just to give you um, the idea that it's a faceted uh, entity. Uh, a very, very modular one. And there's a lot of symmetry between these modules. And when you build your applications, the applications should be designed so that they resemble the, the, the kernel modules as closely as possible. This way they can take, um, uh, they, they can also be highly available, scalable, and uh, resilient. Um, Kind of the, the important pieces with the ONOS is that it offers a southbound, which very, very strongly insulates the core and applications from the details of the underlying environment, and offers a northbound um, through which you can, um, on top of which you can write applications in a modular fashion. Now the southbound itself is really makes it immune um, and makes it possible to uh, adhere and build solutions from different protocols. It can be something esoteric like TL1 or something as futuristic as P P4. Uh, the, the obstructions to the south tend to be device-centric, uh, meaning that they tend to focus on individual uh, network elements and entities that describe them, ports, links, and things like that. Um, now, the APIs at the north are also uh, allow applications to introspect the environment through device-centric abstractions, but they also offer high-level abstractions, kind of composite abstractions, uh, network-centric ones, uh, such as intense uh, ability to reserve resources uh, and kind of en masse, be able to configure the network um, across many different devices. And uh, in general, this tends to make the applications more portable and more efficient. 
So as a brief retrospective, uh, Onos was first uh, open sourced in 2014, I think, December. And at the time we open sourced, we had well, four applications and one southbound plugin specifically for OpenFlow, and it was about 50,000 lines of code. Um, uh, you know, we've not, we are now on our 13th release. Uh, we've introduced, you know, gradually every quarter, we've introduced um, many uh, features over the uh, three years. And now we're half a million lines of code. We have over 150,000, uh, sorry, 150 applications. Uh, that this, of course, includes drivers, various outbound plugins, Yang models, and capabilities like that. Um, so the, the way we generally try to develop the functionality is to balance investment kind of in the new features and demonstrating new capabilities with also building in resilience into the platform. And this is uh, especially true in the last few releases, and I'll talk a little bit more about what that specifically means. Uh, this is just a quick overview of some of the releases. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out that in the past we've done three month releases, but as of the current release, which is the 19, Nightingale release, we've moved to a four month cycle, and this allows us to be more in sync with the core releases and allow us to feed the Onos releases nicely into the uh, court uh, release train. So the Nightingale is going to be the first four month release. So the present focus of the team, um, uh, in which you know, the, not just the ONF team, but it's the extended team, including some of our service providers and vendors working with them, is to harden the, a couple of the past releases, including the current release. But specifically, the focus was on 111 and 112. Uh, to make sure that it can withstand uh, kind of what we've promised. And uh, we've discovered a couple of different, you know, corner cases with network partitions or unclean shutdowns of the nodes. And we were able to fix many of those issues. And um, I'm, I definitely encourage you to talk to some of our uh, service providers here for, uh, for their opinion of this. But we've been told that 111 and 112 are the most solid releases that we've put out in terms of reliability performance, and, um, and just resiliency in terms of network failures and network partitions. We're currently starting to stress out also scalability. Uh, so we're doing some scalability optimizations um, in order to support some of the real world use cases in dealing with large access networks. Um, we're also in the midst of developing ISSU, uh, which is in-service software upgrade capabilities. Now, we've had precursor capabilities of this in 1.12, uh, but we're continuing to work on them um, and making sure that not only the platform itself can be upgraded without downtime, but also that applications on top of that platform can be developed in a way that they can support this feature also. Um, just a quick overview of the deployments that Onos has currently. Now, in the past, most of the deployments were you know, kind of research networks and science and education networks, where most of the um, most of the deployments were using SDN IP and VPLS applications. We've also learned uh, earlier this year that, uh, completely unbeknownst to us, um, an air traffic. Uh, um, and this is not an ATM like in ATM networking, but in air traffic management networks, uh, there is a large uh, safety critical deployment in Brazil, which is responsible for basically safe travel in that area. That's been developed on top of uh, ONOS, and this is done by an Austrian company called Frequentis. They developed this completely without our knowledge, just using off-the-shelf ONOS, you know, using device drivers to develop uh, support for the, soft, for the hardware that they had in field. And this includes brownfield as well as uh, greenfield environments because they have some old radar stations and they have some new open flow switches. And they've integrated all of this under the umbrella of ONOS to provide, uh, to provide the capabilities. Um, and also, of course, there is a large, uh, large initiative going to put Onos in, a, in a production with uh, one of the major U.S. telecom providers. I'm going to let them speak for themselves. But this includes uh, basically uh, having Onos run a very large edge fabric uh, comprising of you know, tens of thousands of clients, 150,000 of routes, and over a million flows, and, and one particular central office, field office cl cluster. This is, of course, using OpenFlow. So 
That's just a quick summary over uh, where ONOS is today, where we, uh, where we are, where we're placing emphasis. And uh, if there's any questions, I'll be willing to. Thank you, Tom. Uh, yep. Okay, so, such a question. But basically, I am Raj Jain from Washington University. Uh, so my question is now ONOS looks very similar to Daylight, and I don't know what Daylight looks now because I haven't gone to their mm -hmm. meeting. But what is the key differentiator between ONOS and Daylight now? Um, I mean, I, I, it's difficult for me to answer. I mean, uh, a fair. Uh, open source versus everything else, right? No, it's not. Now everything is everywhere. So, well, so ONOS can do configuration, ONOS can do control. Uh, the architectures are slightly different. They use similar pieces of technology. It depends, I guess, what it is that you want. If I were to, I don't want to put words in somebody else's mouth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow last year's words from Colin uh, when he was describing what Open Daylight was. And Open Daylight, in his words, he thinks of it less of an SDN controller and more of a next generation management plot management station. That is not the case with ONOS. Now, of course, as part of ONOS, you can do network management because what's the difference between network management and network control? It's a rather fuzzy boundary anyway, right? So ONOS can do network configuration. ONOS can do network control. But it is designed definitely first and foremost to be SDN controller. Uh, this is probably less so the case with uh, Open Daylight, at least judging based on Colin's own words. Hopefully that answers your question. Yen Chao, can you please come up and set up while we take the next question? Thank you. Anyone else with, an, with more, one more question? Hi, Randy Levin, Solar Cable Labs. So how is the progress coming with kind of commercialization and having vendors providing a hardened version of Onos versus the end users needing to take the straight open source and do that it's, support it's a, it's and a, community support? It's a uh, very good question, and, and it kind of touches on, I, I try to allude to it. I know there's going to be a presentation later from the service providers and what they're doing with it, and that will probably answer your question. So I'm not, I'm going to defer the question. All I know is that we're working closely with a telecom provider that I just alluded to, uh, who are working with a number of vendors to, and, and with ONF team as well, to very aggressively in a targeted way squelch out any issues that stand in a way between you know, now and getting into getting, getting an SDN solution in place for that network provider, for, for their edge access network. I'm going to leave it at that, and I will let them speak on their own behalf, and that way I don't disclose anything that shouldn't be disclosed. All Anyone right. else for Thomas? Okay, thank you, Thomas. Thank you very much.